Hi, everyone. Thank you very much for joining us here today. We, we really appreciate it. Uh, we, know that, um, we, we, we know that we don't have the biggest booths, we don't have the biggest videos, and we don't have the loudest music. But we think what we have to say is really, really important. So please know that uh, we're humbled by the fact that all of you are here today, and, and, and we appreciate your attention. Um, what I'd like to do today is I'd like to sort of flash back less than a year ago. We were here, OK? And, and what we had were beta cars. We didn't even have cars yet. We had beta cars. And, and then in the middle of the year, we started delivering cars. And then we, we accelerated through the rest of the year. And, and it's, it was amazing to receive that video in November. And for a small company like ours who's just starting out in the business with all of these others around us, um, it was really reassuring. And, and it was confidence building that we're on the right track. So to win Motor Trend Car of the Year was really, really, really great. But to win all of that was really confirming that we're on the right track. Automobile Car of the Year, Yahoo Autos Car of the Year, Green Car of the Year, Popular Science Best of What's New, Time Innovation of the Year. It sort of makes you feel really great when you go to work every day and you've got others telling you that what you're doing is great and it's the best. And that is what we set out to do every single day. So what I thought I would do is I would walk through a little bit of what went on in 2012 other than the awards and give you a little sense of where we're going. We opened 13 new stores in 2012. These are the ones that are in shopping centers. These are the ones that are in high traffic locations where we can interact with customers when they're not thinking about buying a car. Think about that. When they're not thinking about buying a car. So we have 23 in North America. 19 of them are the new design. We got 33 worldwide. And here's a statistic that I want you to really focus on. Our 19 new design stores that we have open in North America saw 1.6 million visitors in Q4 in three months. 1.6 million visitors. We're growing as a company now. We've got 4,000 employees globally. And we also opened eight supercharger locations. I'm going to talk a little bit more about that in a minute because there's more of a story behind that as to why we're doing that. We also began international work, okay, to get ready for Model S and future cars to go international. In October, we did a press preview over in, uh, in, in, in Germany, and it was incredible. We invited people from automotive magazines, from lifestyle magazines, tech magazines, some fleet magazines. We put them in the car, had them run about 25 miles. We put them on the Autobahn, ran them up to 130 miles an hour in Model S, and they went wild. People got out of the car shaking, going, oh my god, this is awesome. And, and it was really Really, really great and and we follow that up with opening a European distribution center in November we've got our first Model S cars now test driving in Hong Kong and we've got our first Model S in Japan as well not test driving yet that'll be happening soon so a lot of international movement during the past year so what's 2013 gonna bring more more of what's been successful so far we're gonna open up about 25 new stores about half of them in North America, the other half will be international, because international is going to be a major push for us now. And I'm announcing today that we are opening our first store in the spring in China. Um, we think that a great EV in China will be an incredible, incredible opportunity for us. So we're under construction, we're going to open in the spring, and we can't wait. Service. Okay? Service is very important to us. We actually open more service centers than we do stores. And the beauty of our model where you make a reservation and then we configure your car and build it at a later date and ship it to you, okay, deliver it to you, is incredible because we already know where our first 13,000 cars are going. We already know because people haven't reserved. So we can actually put service centers in where we know the cars are going to be. So we can think ahead and take care of our customer, which was great. Now, this is not what our service center looks like. This is what a service center looks like before we take it over. All right? This is what it looks like after we take it over, a place where our customers enjoy getting service. So let's talk a little bit about why we're doing this, OK? Because this, this isn't about numbers. I know I've talked about a bunch of numbers and I've talked about that, but this isn't about numbers to us. It's a long-term vision. 
Our vision is to accelerate the adoption of electric vehicles. It's as simple as that. It's not about making a car. It turns out that the car we made was award winning, but it isn't about that. It never will be about that. Our Roadster was a proof of concept car. High price, low volume. Model S is seen as more medium price, medium volume. And it's to introduce more and more people that driving an electric car can be as good as or better than an electric car. And all of the awards that we've won on Model S sort of reinforce that. Next will be a third generation car. It'll come along in three or four years, about $30,000. The idea is to take the 1.6 million people who went through our stores in Q4 and explain to them that there's another car coming. Explain to them that EVs are great and our cars are gonna be great. And then it's never losing sight of why we're doing this. And I'm gonna talk a little bit now about supercharging. The reason I wanna talk about supercharging is because it evidences that this is not about a car. What we're doing is not about a car, it's about getting people to drive electric. Now one of the things that people always say about driving electric is I can't take a trip. I can't take a trip, how do I take a trip? I gotta charge for 15 hours somewhere on the side of the road at a campground. No, not with us. What we're doing is we announced the supercharger network. We've got eight open now. We started the West Coast and the East Coast, uh, and that's where we're gonna start. We're gonna do East Coast, West Coast, based San Diego to Vancouver, maybe Miami to Boston. We're gonna go across the country, and over the next couple of years, we're gonna open up supercharging everywhere in North America. And the idea is we wanna take away every hurdle there is to people driving an electric car. So how do you do that? Supercharging. You can stop, and in 30 minutes, you can get 150 miles of charge. Leave at 9 o'clock in the morning, drive till noon, get out of the car, have some lunch, walk the dog, go to the bathroom, get back in the car. You got 150 miles of range. You can keep going. And you can take a trip just like it was in an internal combustion engine car. But here's the key, and here's what makes us different it's free. It's free. You don't need a credit card. You don't need a password. You don't need a debit card. You don't need a key. You don't need anything. You pull up, you plug in, you don't leave $100 when you leave. It's free. In a couple of years, you're going to be able to drive from San Diego to Maine for free. That's how you get people to adopt your technology. That's how you get them to try it. You get more people to try it. And that's what we're doing. So that's supercharging. And we're working on that. And you'll start seeing that rolling out very soon. Okay, we've got eight now, six in California, and we started the Northeast Corridor. Okay, so why are we doing this? We're doing this for a brighter future. That's what this is about. It's about a brighter future for your children, your grandchildren, and their children. That's what this is all about. And, and we're doing it one customer at a time, and I will tell you that in our stores, we have one goal. The people who work in the stores, they, they're measured on one, one metric only, that everybody who leaves is smiling. That's it. That's the only, they're not on commission. We don't track how many reservations, they did. don't do that. Everybody who leaves is smiling. And the one question I get a lot, and I do a lot of interviewing, because I interview everybody who's in the stores. One of the questions I get all the time is, well, what's a Tesla gonna look like in five to 10 years from now? I get that question all the time. And here's how I answer that question. Because I don't know what a Tesla is gonna look like five to 10 years from now, but here's what I know. I know three things. One, it's gonna look great. Two, it's gonna perform incredibly, incredibly well. And number three, it's gonna do things that no other car on the planet does. Those are the three things that you can always count on in a Tesla. And the person who is charged every single day with making that happen is our chief designer, Franz von Holzhausen. So I'm gonna turn it over to him now and he's gonna show you the next big thing from Tesla that is gonna do things that no other car on the planet does. Franz, take it away. Thank you. Thanks everyone, and thanks Motor Trend, Automobile, Yahoo, all those guys that actually recognize all the hard work that our little company is really putting out. We're, we're you know, the garage band on a worldwide stage, and um, I think the proof is actually in the pudding, and I challenge everybody to get behind the wheel of a Model S and experience what the electric revolution is really about. And 
George, George just kind of hinted about our ethos and our approach to everything that we do at Tesla. And it really boils down to one word, and it's uncompromised. It's uncompromised in its approach to design, to performance, and obviously to energy efficiency. The part that I'm most responsible for and our team is obviously the design and the product. And we do care about the product beyond the bigger picture of the electric revolution. And I think Model S really starts to demonstrate that you can, also, you can have an incredibly beautiful and attractive and desirable product along with an efficient um, power source and just basically free driving experience. And you can also have the fun aspect, the attributes that we all like about driving vehicles, the performance. Model S goes zero to 60 and people have clocked it at 3.9 in the performance model, zero to 60. It's, it's an unbelievable experience. But we're not stopping there. We want to continue to create this family of vehicles that ultimately gets to a group of products that everybody can get into and everybody can experience and own and really drive this revolution. And that's the, the family. And the next stop after Model S is to develop a product off of the platform of Model S. Model S was not designed specifically for itself. It is a, a platform that can be stretched or developed on, and that's where we end up with Model X. We took a look at the marketplace, and we really realized that the next step for us is to take our uncompromised approach and our, on our incredible performance and energy efficient machine and translate that into a segment that is horribly inefficient at this point. And we want to bring all the same attributes of Model S into Model X. It's uncompromised in its styling, and I think you start to get a, a glimpse of that here. It's uncompromised in the way that you use the product. And you know, this is a this is a segment where practicality and usability is incredibly important. And then, it, obviously, it's uncompromised in its performance. Model X is an all-wheel drive architecture. We leverage the Model S. We add a motor to the front, 0 to 60 in 5 seconds. So performance is always going to be an attribute. And it's, an, an, it's important for us to develop the product to make it look like it lives up to those standards. We looked at the marketplace and we realized that minivans are incredibly practical and they serve a great purpose, but you kind of sell your soul a little bit in order to get that practicality. An SUV or a crossover has all the character and style and panache that we want in a vehicle, but not necessarily that practical in its usability from a customer perspective. So our goal was to blend both practicality and a sexy vehicle into one, and that's where we ended up with Model X. But in the spirit of Tesla, we also wanted to make sure that we carry forward innovation beyond just the powertrain. So this vehicle is really a continuation of some of the innovation that you experience in Model S. We brought forward the big 17-inch screen on the interior, which really revolutionizes the interior of automobiles. Suddenly, your car is now relevant over time. As the car grows and ages with you, it gets better and better. There's no other product or, or automobile in the marketplace that improves over time and we can work with you as a customer to improve that. You can personalize your car. You, we push firmware updates that improve the drivability, the usability. There's apps that come with it. So the experience gets better as you live with the car. And it tailors and tunes towards you. We brought that forward into Model X. The other innovation, things like the retractable door handles. Model S is the most aerodynamic sedan in the marketplace right now with a CD of 0.2 far. And we wanted to carry that same innovation into Model X. The character of the car with its low CD and really uh, efficient center line profile, flat floor on the bottom, again, is going to provide an incredibly efficient car that translates back into range for the user. And then, of course, as many people maybe have seen, the innovation doesn't stop there. 
we wanted to de develop accessibility unparalleled in any other SUV. So we created the Falcon Wing Door, which creates an opening into the second and third row. This is a three row vehicle, seven passengers, unparalleled to any other vehicle, SUV or minivan out in the marketplace right now. The Falcon Wing Door is an innovation that pivots in two places and it allows the door to open vertically before it swings out, like unlike a traditional gullwing door. And that allows the car or the doors or the accessibility in any kind of tight parking spaces, garages, etc. So now you can access second and third row very easily and you don't have to stoop to get into the car. Putting your kids in the second row is an incredibly easy feat because you can do it standing up. Access to the third row for grandparents and other people is incredibly easy. There's plenty of room to access this with this big, massive opening. So looking at the marketplace and really understanding the usability and the practicality was, a, was something that we didn't want to forget about. We wanted this to be an uncompromised vehicle, yet we didn't want the design to be inhibited uh, inhibit that actual practicality. So you see the muscular, sinewy feel, the athletic poise of the car. That's our family character. You'll see that in every Tesla as we move forward. The athletic um, poise and character is an inherent quality of Tesla. And then we give you know the surprise and delight element. And this car, just like Model S, has more interior volume than other cars in its, in its uh, category. And just like Model S has a front, we also didn't stop there. Even though we have all-wheel drive and a motor between the front wheels in this car, we still made sure that there's, that there's room for the front. And as you can see, this front is about the same size as what's on Model S. So any space that we potentially lost with our aero efficiency fast back feeling, we gained back into the front. And I challenge you afterwards to come up and, and check out the car because you'll see behind the third row is more volume and more space than in most third row SUVs that take up a bigger footprint than any other product in here. So again, we're looking at developing the family for Tesla. It started with Roadster, but the true Tesla spirit is really in Model S and its innovation and its uncompromised approach to the segment and vehicles. The next stop along the way is Model X. Innovation in Falcon Wing doors, storage, usability, uh, unparalleled performance, zero to 60 in five seconds, all wheel drive for all different climates. Um, and then, you know what's coming? The next motor trend car of the year we hope is the Gen 3 vehicle. Um, and that is gonna have the same family characteristics that I was just talking about. So thank you very much. Thank you for recognizing Tesla as doing something different in the industry, moving the needle, getting people aware. And our main mission or our main goal is really to rid the world of its addiction to fossil fuel. And we want to do it one car at a time, and, and it takes all of us to, to try to get there. So thank you very much.